I'll give you a chance to scramble, find a Bible, and open up to Psalm 117, and then I'll read it for us. Psalm 117. Praise the Lord, all nations. Glorify him, all peoples. For his faithful love to us is great. The Lord's faithfulness endures forever. Hallelujah. This is the word of the Lord. How can we praise God no matter what's going on in our life? And who has the right to praise God anyway? Is God just for people like us, or is it more than that? These are the questions that are addressed by this most unassuming of psalms. As we've read through the psalms, we've seen a vast range of emotions and sizes in the psalms. You have the beauty of Psalm 23, the grandeur of Psalm 119, the gut-wrenching honesty of Psalm 51. But now we reach this psalm, the shortest in the Bible, two verses long. But in these two simple verses, we find a message that is just as profound as one that we find anywhere else in the Bible. So please join with me in prayer as we start to unpack what Psalm 117 has to teach us. Heavenly Father, please open our ears to what you have to say to us today and speak to us by your word so that we may be better equipped to love and serve you. Amen. Now this Psalm 117 may not look like much at only two verses long, but it actually formed a rather important part in the everyday life of Israel. Because this psalm, along with Psalms 113 to 118, were sung every year at the Passover celebration. The Passover celebration is when the Israelites would gather as a family to remember what God had done for them in bringing them out of Egypt. Before they sat down to eat, they'd sing Psalms 113 and 14. Then they'd eat, and then after they'd finished eating, they'd sing Psalms 116, 17, and 18. All these psalms would help them to remember exactly why the Passover was important, exactly why God had saved them, and what God wanted them to do because he had saved them. See, every year they'd gather together, they'd kill a lamb, and remember how God had brought them out of slavery in Egypt with a mighty hand. It was a bit like someone took Anzac Day and Australia Day and wrapped it all up into one neat bundle. This is where they would remember a great sacrifice, but also celebrate the birth of a new nation. But if the Passover is all about what God had done for Israel and how God had saved Israel, Psalm 117 feels a little bit out of place. It doesn't talk about Israel. It talks about all the nations and all peoples. The nations is a term that the Bible often uses to talk about anyone who's not Israel. So why is a key Passover song talking about someone who's not Israel? Well, it was to remind the Israelites that the Passover wasn't just for them. The family sung Psalm 117 to remind them that actually the news of the Passover wasn't just good news for Israel. It was good news for everyone because the nations would look in, they'd see the Passover celebration, they'd hear what God had done for Israel and they were supposed to go, oh wow, look at what God has done for them. Isn't that amazing? I want to be a part of that too. And then in verse 2, this psalm gives us the reasons why we should praise God. Firstly, because of his love and secondly, because of his faithfulness. God's faithful love is the love that God shows to his people who are determined to get rid of him. I like how the Jesus Storybook Bible describes this love. It describes this love as God's never stopping, never giving up, always and forever love. This is the love that drives and motivates God to endeavour to continue to live with his people 
despite all our best efforts to get rid of him. And God's faithfulness to us, despite the fact that we are always turning our backs on him, he keeps coming back and calling us back to himself. His faithfulness to his promises to Abraham, David, Israel, and to us, the fact that he always keeps his promises. And that faithfulness doesn't have an end date. His faithfulness endures forever. And when we see that love and that faithfulness, the psalm directs us to the only appropriate response, a resounding hallelujah, a word that simply means praise be to God. The question that that leaves us with is, who's us in verse 2? Who is being invited to praise God? Is it just Israel? Well, the psalm mentions all people. God's love is clearly shown in the Passover festival, but it's certainly not limited to it. The nations were supposed to look in and see that God had blessed the whole world through what he had done for Israel. The Israelites would sing this psalm every year to remind themselves that God was not just a God for Israel, that he was a God for everyone. But then, one Passover festival, a Jewish rabbi from the backwaters of Nazareth and his 12 close friends came to a stranger's house and they decided to have the Passover meal together. But this Passover changed everything. Matthew records it at the end of his gospel account, and he says it in these words. For this is my blood that establishes the covenant. It is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I tell you, from this moment, I will not drink of its fruit until the day when I drink it anew in my Father's kingdom with you. And after singing the Psalms, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus sang this psalms with his disciples as one of the last things he did before he was arrested. He would have sung this psalm every year with his family, reminding him of the goodness of God and the call for Israel to be a light to all people. But then, this one event, this psalm takes on a whole new meaning. Because Jesus didn't just sing this psalm, he is this psalm. See, Jesus' death and resurrection embodies this psalm because in the Easter event we see Jesus opening the way for all people to come to God, no longer as his enemies but as his beloved sons and daughters. And this is why this psalm reminds us that we always have a reason to praise God. Because no matter how dark our times are, no matter what we're going through, this psalm reminds us our biggest problem has been dealt with. Our biggest problem was that we were separated from God, our creator, that we were his enemies. But in the death and resurrection of Christ, that problem has been fixed. Through faith, we can come to God as his children, And that means no matter what happens, we can be 100% sure that he will safely bring us home one day to live with him and the rest of his family forever. That is why we can always praise God, because that will always be true and nothing that can happen in this life will cause it not to be true. Because of Jesus' death and his resurrection, No longer do we focus on the love and faithfulness of God shown in the blood of a lamb smeared with hyssop on a doorpost, but we see the love and faithfulness of God in the blood of his son smeared on a cross and his resurrection three days later. The nations, all people, can now join with Israel in singing God's praises no longer as outsiders looking in, but as fully-fledged members of God's family.
because we have all been saved by the death and resurrection of Christ, by grace, through faith. He is the Passover lamb. And it's the love of God for all people that enables everyone to join with us and sing hallelujah. Paul even quotes this in in the reading we heard just before in, in Romans chapter 15 when he says, even the Gentiles get to praise God for his mercy because of what Jesus has done. But this psalm isn't finished yet. This psalm looks and we look around and we say, hang on, there are more Christians in the world than ever before. All the nations have joined in. How can this psalm not be finished yet? Well, that's because of what we see in Revelation chapter 7. John describes what he sees from God and he says, After this, I looked and there was a vast multitude from every nation, tribe and people and language, which no one could count, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. This psalm points us forward to the day when we will join physically with everyone from around the world and say with them, salvation belongs to our God. This psalm shows us God's faithful love to all people. That means we need to look outwards because God and Jesus, they're not just, he's not just a God for the West. He's not just a God for people who look like us, sound like us, or like the same things as us. He is a God for all the nations. And that means we need to do our part in making sure all the nations hear about the reasons we have to praise God. This is why we partner with many global partners to help and support them in their work in doing this. But more than that, all people doesn't just refer to people who are overseas. The nations are not just in other countries. They're across the street. They're in our workplaces. They live in town or next door. Even the people close to us need to hear this message. We need to find ways of talking to the people around us and saying, join with me, praise God, because his love and faithfulness are never-ending. One of the things we can do is follow the example of the psalm. The opening line of Psalm 117 is an invitation to everyone. It says, come, praise God with me. So do that. Send out that invitation to as many people as you can. Yes, it's scary. Yes, they will turn us down. But no matter who they are, they need to hear about the love and faithfulness of God. And now is the best time, a better time than ever to invite people to church because they don't have to come to a scary church building. They just need to click on a live stream link. Who can you? Invite to join with you in praising God? Is there a colleague, a friend? Maybe inviting them to church isn't the first step. Maybe it's just reflecting on the reasons you have to praise God and telling them. Whenever I get good news, I like to say, praise God, to remind me and the person I'm talking to that all good things come from God. Maybe you can start sharing your good news with the people around you and tell them how God is the one who brought you that good news, who brought you out of that dark time, who sent one of God's people at just the right time, who inspired you with a verse from his word just when you needed it, who sent you a job or some other help. This is how we praise God. We tell other people what he has done. We sing songs. Or, as far as possible, we gather with his people and we share. We say, this is what God has done. 
when you like a painting and you tell someone, I really like that painting, that's a great way of praising the artist who made it. And so whenever we turn to someone and say, look at what God has done for me, that's a great way of praising God and saying, the one who did this is great. And he did it because of his never stopping, never giving up, always and forever love. Every year, the Israelites would gather. They'd sing this song to remind themselves, God's love is not limited to people like me, but is open to everyone, to all the nations. So every time you have the opportunity to remember what God has done for you, read this psalm. Remind yourself that that great love and faithfulness is not just for you, but for everyone for people on the other side of the world and for people on the other side of the street. If you're going through a hard time, if you're struggling and you're struggling to find reasons to praise God, then remember, God has fixed your biggest problem. The death and resurrection of Jesus has brought you to the Creator as his friends, as his children, And he has promised that he will safely bring you to live forever with him. And nothing that is going on in your life will ever change that. And when you remember that, feel free to take some more time and reflect on your life. Look back and see all the times that God has been faithful to you and shown you his love. All the times he has answered your prayers in unexpected ways. The times he has helped you. And remember, he did that not because you deserved it or because you earned it, but simply because of his great and never-ending love for us. The death and resurrection of Christ is a message for everyone. It shows God's love and faithfulness to everyone and gives all people a great reason to praise God. Our role in all this is to share it, is to take every opportunity that God gives us to say, praise God, look at what he has done for me because of his love and faithfulness. God gives us this news to share with other people and to support those who are taking it, not just next door, but to the other side of the world. Because God is not just a God for the West, for people like us. He is a God for the whole world, and everyone deserves to hear about him and worship him. Not just on the other side of the world, but on the other side of the street too. And so let's pray as we go out in this week that God would give us many opportunities to help us join with everyone in praising God, to invite more and more people to praise him, and to support those doing the hard work of leaving this country and spreading God's message all around. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your never-ending love and faithfulness that you have shown to us in your Son. We thank you that we always have a reason to praise your name. And we ask that you will help us to give others a reason to praise your name, that you'll give us the courage to take the opportunities that you give us to invite others to praise you, and that you will help us to support those who are taking this message out of this country. Amen.